Now we're currently storing details about the user like the first and last name, but the user at the moment has no way to update these. So in this video, we're going to create the ability for a user to update their account and that includes their email as well. So let's add the option to the navigation just here. Uh, so we'll go over to views, templates, navigation, and we'll add this if the user is authenticated. So we're going to call this update profile. And here we're going to call this account.profile. So we need to generate our roots or create our roots. So we're going to create an account profile root and we'll have the post one as well. So under roots, let's create a new folder called account. This will just be any account related uh, roots, not authenticated or authentication roots. So this is going to be profile.php. And in here we'll say app get account profile. And we'll use app as always. And we'll call this account.profile. And we'll render a view here and create that just now. So we're going to render account profile.php. So let's create this uh, view just in here. So we'll create a new folder called account and a new file in here called profile.php. Again, we'll take the code from the home template, paste that in, we'll say update profile in the title and we'll say update profile here and we'll add this to our roots file so under well we can just add it down here under any account related roots so this is for our profile and now we see update profile we can click that and we see this here so this is just going to be a form with three fields we're going to give the user the ability to update their email address and also update their first name and last name as well so inside of this form then, this is going to be a form to account profile.post. The method is obviously going to be post and we'll turn auto complete off as well. You obviously don't need to do this. So let's create our post route now. So in here, let's say app post account profile and we'll use app and we'll call this account.profile.post and in here for now we'll just say echo posted so we know that the form gets posted cool so the form then like I said is going to consist of the email the first name and the last name and we will come across a bit of a problem with the email because what we're going to be doing is checking if the uh, email is a unique email. We don't want the user to change their email to an email that exists for another user. We protect against that when we register, but we need to protect, protect against it here as well. But when we do submit the form, we're actually going to need to check if the email that the user submitted is the same as their current email and then ignore the validation. So... We'll have a label for email here. And we'll have an input type of text. We'll call that email. And we'll call this email as well for the ID. And once again, we'll duplicate this down here. The first name is going to be first name. And then finally, we'll have the last name. And of course, you can add any other fields here from your database table that you want to store about the user. So down here, we'll have a submit button. And we'll just call this update. Now, we have a couple of security considerations here. What we're not doing is protecting this route against an authenticated user. So if I was logged out and I was to click on update profile, I would still see this if I was logged out. So again, we need to use our middleware filters 
and we need the user to be authenticated so we can do the same in here so that's really important we don't want unauthenticated users to be able to navigate to this URL because they're not going to be able to update their profile that way so again when we submit this form now we're going to get a cross-site request forgery token mismatch so we need to add that to our form so we have a hidden input we have the cross-site request forgery key and for the value we have the cross-site request forgery token so now we can submit this form and uh, we see that posted text we, we wrote in earlier. So let's start to fill this out and then we'll look at something else we need to do in a minute, which is to pre-populate the fields on here if these values exist. So we'll do that after we've kind of uh, sent this request through and we'll, we'll see how we do that. So we're gonna say request, because at request, we put in our request object. We need to pull in the email which is request post email. We need to get, grab the first name, which is first name, the last name here, which is last name. And we're gonna to need to validate this as well. So V equals app validation. And we'll validate as normal. So the email is that email we submitted through and the rules for this are that it's required an email and it also needs to be a unique email as well. So a user can't change it to an email that already exists in our database. And we'll be having to add to this uh, because we're gonna see a problem with this uh, a bit later. So the last name or the first name rather we'll start with is that first name variable. And this needs to be alpha and a max of whatever we gave it in the database, which I think was 50. So let's check this out. Yes, we've got 50 for the first and last name. So we can put that as uh, 50 and we can do the same for the last name here. Like that. So if the validation passes, we want to update the user's account. So if V passes, we're going to say user update and passing them new values. So the email is going to be that email address. The first name is going to be that first name variable. And the last name again is going to be that last name variable. And we can flash a message to say that we've updated the user's account. Your details have been updated. And I guess we can keep them on the same page. So we can just say app response redirect. And we'll redirect them to the same page. That's account.profile. Now, otherwise we want to render the form with errors. So app render account profile.php. And we pass them variables in as we've passed throughout the whole series, which are the errors that have occurred, which come from our validation and the request. So we don't lose any of that form data like that. So when we submit this form now, we get, we, are seeing errors now because we don't have any of these filled. But what we want to do is we want to output the initial data for the user's uh, email, first name and last name. So uh, I guess we could start with the errors. So let's just say if errors dot has email and that if and we'll output the error within here. So errors dot first email and we can duplicate this line down to here for the first name and again we can duplicate this down here for the last name like so so that will give us the errors but it still doesn't give us the pre-populated information 
By the way, the first name and last name are not required, so we, we don't need to worry about them. Okay, so here we want to output the value of either uh, the user's email or if they've posted the form, the data that they posted so they can correct any data if we have anything invalid. So here we're going to say value equals and then we're either going to output the post email value that they sent through or the user's email. So we're going to say request dot post email. And we're going to do a ternary operation here. So we're going to say we're, we're basically saying if this exists, then we want to output request dot post email. Otherwise, we want to output auth dot email. So what that will do is if we don't have that available, it output my email address just in there. We'll do the same for the first name and the last name as well. So we can just copy this value attribute, paste it into here. We can change this to first name, this to first name, and obviously we want to pull in auth.firstname, that property. So again, the same for the last name. We'll paste that in there. We'll change this to last name. We'll change this to last name and that as well. So if we do have a first and last name in here, we see them in there as well. We can hit update. So at the moment, we are seeing this problem where we can't actually submit the form because the unique email rule is taking into account the fact that this does already exist in the database, but it's our own email address. So we should be able to update this. Let's just get rid of first name and last name so we can see ourselves updating them in just a minute. But we need to tackle the problem of this email address. It's not going to let us through. So what we need to do is we need to modify our validation rule. So remember we have this unique email validation rule. We need to put a check in here to see if the, use, if the email that's being sent through is actually the user's email. Then we just return true and we just pass this rule. Because if the user's ever submitting a unique email, we never really want to take into account their email. So we can put a check in here to say, if this auth, remember we have that dependency sent through uh, in here, auth. So if the user is authenticated and this auth email is equal to the value that's passed through to that validation, then we just want to ret re return true from this function or this method. So now we can hit update and uh, we get an error here. We'll fix that in a minute, but the, for the validation has passed. So that's the point. So we've got an error on line 24 on profile.php. So let's just uh, have a look at what might've gone wrong here. So line 24 and um, yeah, we have uh, user update. Uh, we have an error just here. So what we can do then is just to remedy this is say app auth update, which is the current authenticated user. So now when I hit update, your details have been updated. We didn't actually see anything update because obviously uh, we're not entering anything different. Remember this um, method here that we used outputs the username or the full name. So we'll know that this works when we enter the first name and last name and hit update. It says your details have been updated and it hasn't worked. So we need to figure out what's happening here. So we're actually updating this record just here, but nothing's happening. I suspect it's because in our user model, we haven't added our first and last name properties under our fillable. So let's go ahead and do that now. So first name and last name. And there we go. So if we update this, hit update, there we go. So your details have been updated. We see our full name here because we're using that method we have in our user model that we created earlier. And we now see first and last name in this form. We can go ahead and uh, update any details here. So really, if you wanted to go ahead and add more fields on here that relate to your user, you can just use the same method of validating them and updating them. And that will be stored uh, along with their record which uh, you can do what you want with. So you can output these where you want. So taking a look at all users now, we see the full name here for that user. Remember we added that earlier. And we also see the full name when we are viewing our profile page. 
So there we go. That's how we uh, update our user's profile. And we can extend this if we want to include more fields.